Good morning. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. My name is Austin Dillon, and today we're going to be going through the Carrier Bryant Ductless product line, uh, looking at updates. We'll start by looking at the current product line and review any product highlights or updates. Then we'll look at the new 40 MBAB air handler systems. We'll then look at the new 38 MUR and 40 MUA systems. Uh, we'll then talk about marketing, promotion, and resources, and we're going to do the 25C tax credit updates in a separate wording. Quickly, just looking at the overall product line, kind of a bird's eye view that shows us, as we probably already know, the comfort and legacy lines consist only of single zone high wall units, and this is the case for the uh, Infinity and Evolution tiers as well. Majority of the product uh, variety comes out of the mid-tier product line. So first product update, looking at the comfort and legacy single zone systems. Um, the 38 MHR BQ had been in transition to a 38 MHR CQ outdoor unit. That transition is almost complete. Uh, so we had announced this previously. We saw some changes in efficiency and performance. We are now getting a upgrade to the matching high wall for that system. So um, previously it was the 40 MHHQ. Now they've added an A, so it's a 40 MHHAQ. Um, and in conjunction with the new outdoor unit, we're seeing some additional uh, efficiency increases. You can see it has a redesigned chassis. Will remain multi-zone compatible. So just as a reminder, uh, and, I'll, and uh, I'll take this opportunity to clear up some confusion as well. High walls that come out of the entry tier comfort and legacy line, like the one we're looking at here, high walls that come out of the infinity and evolution line, <clears throat> and high walls that come out of the preferred and performance line can all be mixed and matched onto preferred performance multi-zone equipment only. Uh, so you can use these high walls and mix and match them uh, cross tier, so to speak, when it's a multi-zone unit. That is not approved on single zone equipment. So I've had guys kind of misconstrue what I'm saying and take a infinity high wall and put it on a performance single zone outdoor unit. That's not what we're saying you can do. You can take these and you can put them cross tier and mix and match to any extent you want on multi-zone equipment. Uh, the indoor unit got an economy mode, and it also got uh, bi-directional motorized louver. So now all of the high wall products in the lineup uh, include louvers that can be controlled remotely, not only vertically, as is the industry standard, uh, but horizontally as well. Still retains its smaller dimensions. Um, so on average, you know, an inch or so, sometimes in some cases, two inches shorter uh, than most cabinets. So it's nice when you have a spot between maybe a window and a wall uh, that's fairly tight. This is a potential option. And again, if it's a multi-zone job, you could um, take this and apply it onto that job. So <clears throat> nice upgrade there in the uh, comfort legacy, both in terms of the outdoor unit and the new window unit. You can see the performance here. So, and, and these are sear. And so these are the two ratings and you can see um, over 20, 20 seer uh the heating capacity output gone up a little bit um that at five degrees i think that we used to have some in the 50s and now they've improved up into the mid 60s so again it's not a primary heating uh unit it's an entry tier uh you know budget oriented unit single zone one-to-one -one only but <clears throat> relative to that product segment it's it's very efficient. So most of them come in at maybe 15, 16, 17 sear across the board. Uh, these are up over 20s in some cases. So uh, a nice product. And again, I'll take a moment just to remind everybody, all of our stuff is built in band, base pan heaters, can provide ambient cooling uh, out of the box down to negative 13 degrees uh, and will run in the heating mode, delivering some amount of capacity down to negative 22 degrees. And they also, of course, have the option to add Wi-Fi to all of our systems as well. All right. Looking at the Infinity and Evolution single zone systems, um, these are only now being offered through Pierce Phelps in 9 and 12,000 BTU iterations. There's a few 18K high walls left. We'll sell through those. 
and we will then uh, only have the nines and twelves available. The reason for that being that there is a uh, cabinet change and the performance at the 18 was really not significantly different than it was in the uh, mid-tier product and the cabinet that they used for the Infinity and Evolution 18 was a mid-tier cabinet. So you're effectively getting a mid-tier product at that point. So <laughs> we'd like to not to bring it in. Um, however, looking at the indoor and outdoor units in the, in the 912K, you can see the efficiency is still very good up to 42 SEER. Um, we're getting an indoor model change that was an A, so it was a, it was a, I'm sorry, this is a typo, it should be a 40, um, but that would be an A here, this is correct, a 619 PH, previously was an A, now it's a BQ, uh, and then the outdoor unit had changed a while back, that transition is complete, it's a 38 NPR BQ. Just to really quickly review some of the features of this premium unit, and then we'll reference back to this because it applies to our mid-tier product as well. Has built-in Wi-Fi, so there's a uh, Wi-Fi kit in the box with this unit. Comes with its standard. Has a motion sensor that can enter and exit setback based on occupancy, and also direct air toward or away from any occupants. Has vertical and horizontal motorized louvers, just like we mentioned on the. Uh, legacy and comfort product however these are split so there are two discrete pair and so in theory this one can go up and down left to right um independently of this one so these could you know this one could be pointing up while this one's pointing down or this one can be pointing this way while this one's pointing this way uh etc so <clears throat> all, again all of our products have motorized uh louvers both vertical and horizontally but this one is split as well and then it has a relative humidity uh set point function that allows you to set both a cooling and relative humidity set point uh, and it will converge on those targets um, simultaneously so it will it will adjust fan speed target evaporator coil temperature uh, compressor speed etc to converge on those without overcooling very nice feature when it comes to uh, basements and other applications where dehumidification is one of the primary drivers uh something to note though about that feature is that it, it is only there on single zone equipment when you and and i mentioned this because the mid-tier product has that feature as well which we'll point out but when you apply it multi-zone that the outdoor unit because it's managing the other zones uh can't necessarily do what is is needed to be done to achieve that relative humidity uh and temperature set point when other equipment's calling. So that gets lost to some extent on multi-zone. Under the right conditions in multi-zone, it, it can work, but it's not a guarantee on multi-zone. No changes in the preferred uh, or performance MAR line or MARB line, same as we're used to. Uh, it does come six through 36. However, there was a change to the MBRB line, and this slide just kind of tries to illustrate the relationship between the two lines. So uh, the 6 through 36 that you can see here in blue is the MARB line, MARBQ. And I show you the equipment compatibilities and stuff as well, but really what we want to see here is the relationship between this line and the uh, larger capacity line, which is which was previously the 38 MBRBQ. There's some overlap. They both provide a 36,000 B2 capacity option, but then you can see it extends out to make up the uh, the four and five ton options as well. I'll show you the compatibility. Those of you guys that have been installing this for a while know that the primary difference uh, from an installation standpoint is that the systems that match with the MAR unit uh, wire with a tray cable, and the systems that match with the 38 MBRB units wired with a separate communication cable and uh, power conductor. That being the case, anything that's compatible with the MARB is compatible with multi-zone equipment, and anything that is compatible with the MBRB is not compatible with multi-zone equipment. So that's just a way to kind of understand this. But um, this product, this MBRB, is seeing a... Um, revision it's moving from the b to the c some we saw some marginal efficiency improvements we got a new cabinet uh in the 36k since it's single uh fan only and we're in the process of that transition 
So you may get either model number and, and all the matches are the same. They're forward and backward compatible as always. Um, so no, the, for all intents and purposes, the same unit, but I also just want to take the opportunity to illustrate the difference between these two lines and how they're used in conjunction with one another to provide the full uh, range of capacities. All right, this product's been out a little while, but um, it's still worth noting. We I still think there's a strong argument that it's the best high wall on the market. The 40 MAHB or 619 AHB comes in six through 36,000 BTUs, up to 28 SEER, has the same motion sensor that we talked about on the Infinity and Evolution product, also has a relative humidity sensor and set point, so that same functionality is there as well. Uh, this is a typo. It's not a split bidirectional motorized louver, but it is, again, bidirectional uh, motorized louvers. And the real, besides getting all of the premium comfort features um, from a mid-tier product, which obviously there's a lot of bang for buck, uh, the installation and service features are uh, well, some of the most compelling parts of it. So some nice installation features, a nice wall bracket, built-in level, kickstand to hold it out off the wall while you're making your connections behind the unit. Um, and then there's a serviceability aspect as well. Most of us have seen this at this point. Uh, at uh, We've had it at the trade show the last couple of years demoing it. We've we've brought it around. We've had videos. And this is one of them, but I'm going to play it real quickly uh, just for anybody's benefit that has not seen it. But the reception on these obviously has been really good. Um, as you'll see here in a minute, it's, they're very appealing from a service perspective. And I think that there's value not only on the back end, being able to service it reliably, quickly, effectively, uh, but there's a sales story there as well. So you can use that to sort of position yourself differently from other people that might be proposing equipment in the house. <clears throat> um, talk about service a little bit. It's oftentimes neglected during the sales process and hopefully differentiate yourself and get the sale. And almost completely toolless uh, as well as you can see. There is one Phillips head screw and the holding it together. But once that's removed, it's all just done with these locking tabs. And you'll see here that the drain pan, blower wheel, uh, and blower motor all come out as a single piece and can be maintenance. I think realistically in the field, you can expect to have that out in five minutes. So a very popular product, one that we're really proud of and has... Uh, <clears throat> had great reception. So just wanted to share that one more time. Well, looking at the 40 MBDQs, these have been around, but they um, have increased in popularity recently. Uh, lots of manufacturers offer these. Most of them have an integrated pump and float safety. Uh, one of the things that makes ours unique is that you can install it both uh, horizontally and vertically. So guys have been able to take advantage of that. It becomes much more versatile at that point. Um, and they like to use it for dividing capacity between different smaller spaces. It'll let, if you know, if you can put it in a closet, uh, which lots of guys do, if you can put it uh, in an attic or crawl space underneath the space, if there's some sort of uh, limited attic space, oftentimes you can still use these. You can put them behind knee walls. Uh, you can frame them in, as I'll show you in a little bit. Um, <clears throat> just become a lot more versatile and useful. Uh, once you realize that they install, the, they're relatively small, they install vertically uh, or horizontally. And you can, again, some of those holes in uh, the approach to ductless jobs are the, usually a bathroom, hallways, common areas. This will allow you to do that, will allow you to reduce the number of indoor units you need. Hopefully that reduces uh, the number of ports that you need on your outdoor unit and then pushes the size back down. So we see a lot of equipment that's oversized for homes. Uh, from a capacity standpoint, just because they want to get all the, they need the ports to facilitate all of the indoor units. Uh, so you do one of these, you can hit the common areas potentially, reduce the number of high walls that have to be in the space. Uh, and oftentimes you can use it, um, you know, to address any concerns about aesthetics or anything like that. <laughs> Excuse me, since it is a concealed unit. In this picture, you can see they put it, there's a low attic over this, I think it was a dentist office. No room on the wall for a high wall. Just use a linear grill and then a lay-in uh, filter box on the underside of these lights. And it gives you a really clean aesthetic. You can also do that behind a knee wall. A lot of times uh, floor consoles don't work. Even, there's knee walls. We think floor consoles, but the layout of the room may not work really well. Being able to get line sets to uh, exactly where that's going to, you know, line up with the, you know, where you want to put it in the room where you're trying to position it. 
oftentimes becomes challenging. If you can put one of these behind the knee wall, get your line set up and <clears throat> up and uh, to the house behind that knee wall, just about anywhere, instead of having to line it up directly. Same with your drainage, obviously. Uh, and then you can lay it horizontally or vertically behind the, uh, the knee wall and get basically the same effect as a cassette without having to see it, without having to have uh, the line sets and everything line up. And oftentimes giving you more options in terms of where you really want to discharge the air into the room. So we really like that product. Guys have been successful with it. Um, a lot of guys really like this. I've been doing something like this uh, where they'll stand it vertically and have like some finishing carpenter come in and um, box it out and do something nice like that. You can also recess it into, uh, you know, old radiator cavities. You want to remove a radiator, put it there, put it underneath a radiator cover, uh, modify it obviously so that the air can come out. Uh, we got guys doing that too. So <laughs> there really is an opportunity to uh, do a nice job with these, create a nice clean aesthetic. And it's a nice uh, tool to have too when they when the issue comes up about aesthetics you know not wanting to see the equipment so much it will be seeing um a new model coming out we're expecting in the next few months we haven't gotten any real definitive details yet it'll be single uh, and multi-zone compatible and backwards compatible again uh, just like everything else the new offering will have higher static capability that's really intended for better filtration options. So now we'll offer a lower static and a higher static. It's really just a question of what sort of filter you're trying to put on. It's not a question of ductwork, guys. The issue with these is not that they can't handle static. You know, if we look at this unit, I believe this is supposed to represent a, uh, this is a 912. So this is an 18K unit. It's blowing about 600 CFM, but rated at 0.4 inches of static. It's more than a residential air handler. It's more than a, you know, FB uh, air handler. You know, if we go up to the two times rated at point, so these are good static pressure ratings. Uh, they can handle static pressure. The issue that occurs with these is not that the static pressure is too high, it's that the duct system is actually not restrictive enough. So uh, as you can see, if I'm going to move 400 CFM and I'm going to size it at a tenth of an inch, I'm going to get almost perfect velocity for my trunk, 800 uh, feet per minute, which is ideal. It's what, what uh, <laughs> is recommended by manual D. Uh, that's a velocity I want that's going to pressurize my duct system, and that's going to push air out of my registers. However, these modulate just like the high wall. So uh, as it as it ramps down, becomes closer to set point, it may only want to move, and I'm just giving broad numbers here as an example, 200 CFM, half the amount of air, which is totally can happen with these. So um, then what happens is the static pressure drops dramatically, and now... Uh, I've got more like 400 feet per minute, which is which is outside of the acceptable range for trunk velocity. I'm not pressurizing my duct system. I'm just not pushing any air out. If I were to measure the static pressure uh, in the duct system during this operation, I'm going to read you know, I'm going to read well below the rated static. I'm not going to be in excess of it. Uh, I'm going to be well below it, and that's the root cause of the issue. So. Um, the, the increased static is really for better filtration options so that we can put more accessories on that duct work, uh, not so that we can do different things in terms of the duct design. Uh, it, the, if you design it traditionally, even if the thing could manage at an inch of static, which this one can't, you're still going to have this problem uh, unless you take the right design approach to your duct work. So I'm happy to talk to guys about that. I'm not going to go through it totally here, but that gives you sort of an idea of what the issue is. There's sort of been a misconception as to what these low static units meant. And a lot of the guys installed them and had them not perform as expected. Uh, and then sort of <laughs> attributed that to them being low static units. That's that's not what's going on there in most cases. So. All right, uh, another new product that we've got is our, whether you wanna call it a linear cassette, a one-way cassette, a retrofit cassette, um, it is a, a recessed ceiling cassette designed to fit in between 14-inch uh, base bases. And it, it blows in one direction, right? It's so unlike a traditional ceiling cassette that has four directions, this one's just blowing one, thus the linear or one-way terminology that some kind of gets applied. We, we have two models. Uh, as you can see here, it's a 40 MCCA Q9 and then an 18. Between those two models, there's a dip switch that will uh, have them function as 
in the case of the nine, either a six or a nine, because you can see it's paired here with the six and here with the nine. Uh, or in the case of an 18, all functions either 12 or an 18. Again, here paired with the 12 and the 18. They are single and multi-zone compatible. Very nice efficiencies in the single zone iterations. Um, they have a built-in lift pump. They have a built-in disconnect. They are 100% serviceable through the bottom panel. Uh, they do have Wi-Fi uh, accessory options. And they have two installation options. They can be both uh, mounted with all thread, which is the traditional approach to cassettes, or they can be flush mounted to the joist, which we'll show you in a couple of videos here in a second. You can see the width, the most important, uh, they're calling it the, the depth, okay, which I would call it the width, but the most important uh, dimension, which is how it fits in between the base space, uh, which if frame 16 on center would give you a 14 inch base space, this is 13 and just shy of a quarter inches. So should, um, increase the likelihood of it fitting into the base spaces that you come across. Uh, in terms of length, it is, uh, again, they call that width for whatever reason, but uh, 50 inches, there's some addition there. I don't believe that dimension includes the cover. Uh, but a lot of that comes from the fact that there is a built-in disconnect into, in the units. About four or so inches of it uh, can be attributed to that disconnect being there. So there's a video on a couple of the mounting options. Most of us have, are familiar with this, but there's the flush mount option right there, uh, which would certainly be the easiest. And then I have another video. It's a little funny, I think, but it will show us the all thread option as well. So I thought at least here it is. Apologies. Uh, we've all seen that method. So that's nice to have. That's kind of the one piece in the product portfolio that was missing. It's not, you know, the most crucial piece to have, but it's certainly nice to be able to say that we have it at this point. So hopefully you guys can make use of that as well. And then the serviceability of it. Uh, this just shows how some of the panels open and come away to give you access to the drain, refrigerant pipe connections, uh, and electrical and motor connections. All right, looking at the multi-zone outdoor equipment, uh, we did announce this in the last uh, webinar. However, we're still going through the transition, so it, it's worth mentioning, and there's some potential to sort of for confusion. So um, this is the phase out. This is the old models, and then these are the new models. We'll go through them one by one. But um, you can see for the most part that there's just going to be a model number change, and then uh, whether they're standard or high heat. So. Looking at the single fan cabinets and of for the multi-zone equipment, uh, and starting with the 38 previous generation, 38 MGRQ18B. Uh, it was standard heat, and you can see its efficiencies listed here, CER, ER, and HSPF. It is going to remain a standard heat unit. There is not a high heat option on the 18K unit. Uh, and they're going to slide a B in there. So it's a B revision, 38 MGR BQ18. I think of the R as standing for regular heat, and the B as the revision. Uh, you can see got some efficiency increases, remain standard heat. Looking at the two ton unit, the, the two, by the way, most of us know the two and the two and a half ton units are our workhorse models. Um, first, looking at the model number change, it got the B as well. But now the R is changed to an H to designate high heat. Uh, in addition to it being high heat, got some nice efficiency increases. Uh, and then the same is true of the uh, two and a half ton unit. It was always high heat. It's getting a new model number to indicate that that is the case. It remains high heat and it got some efficiency increases. Um, the equipment have circuit isolation valves, built in base pan heaters. We already said that up to four ports. This letter, by the way, designates how many ports. So this one has two, this one has three, this one has four, forward and backward compatible. And these, these transitions are complete. Now looking at the two fan cabinets, um, I'm gonna start with the 48 action, then I'll go up to the 36. So the 48 was a standard heat unit, the 38 MGRQ 48 E, again, indicating five ports of connectivity. Um, and standard heat, you can see the efficiencies there. We are now offering this in two models. Again, and you can see the model number, the 38 MGRB, so R for 
regular or standard heat, saw a slight efficiency increase. And this is basically the direct, um, you know, the evolution of this unit. So, and then we introduced the high heat unit 38 MGHB. You can see uh, some sort of marginal efficiency increases, but it's available in high heat. Jumping over to the three ton unit, they gave us the same, uh, sort of the same, but backwards. So we had a high heat model to begin with, and they gave us the option of a standard heat and high heat. We're not electing to bring in the standard heat. We'll see why on a subsequent slide. We're continuing to um, offer this one. So this is the, again, sort of uh, the direct replacement here going from a 38 MGRQ36 to a 38 MGHBQ36, maintaining the high heat and getting some efficiency increases. Um, these transitions are nearly complete. These are all are gonna remain two fan cabinets. This one would not have been a two fan cabinet had we brought it in. Again, we're gonna elaborate on that in a second. Again, built-in base pan heaters up to five quarts on the four ton, forward and backward compatible, and we got a high heat option in the 48. This is gonna illustrate why we elected not to uh bring in the 36 are the standard heat uh 36 we were told that people wanted a single fan standard heat one for their multi-zone cooling applications not have to pay as much and get into a two fan cabinet to use a 36 here um i'm going to illustrate why we didn't bring it in and it's also going to segue us into uh our multi-zone performance and really looking at the as i already mentioned the two and the two and a half ton units as our workforce units how to sort of use those to our advantage. So uh, if we just compare the two and a half ton unit that we already stock, which is high heat to the proposed three ton regular capacity unit, uh, they both have the same number of ports. The two and a half ton unit is energy star rated and the th three ton is not. Uh, nominally, they are different cooling capacities, but functionally in the field, they offer almost identical cooling capacities as I'm gonna illustrate further on uh, some slides coming up. Again, one's Energy Star and one's not. So as you would expect, the efficiency ratings are better. You get 25 on the two and a half versus 23 on the, on the three. 12 and a half ER versus 11 and a half. The HSPFs are the same. And then it's just a cherry on top. Uh, you're going to get uh, the full 29,400, so nearly 30,000 BTUs of heat at five degrees out of the two and a half ton unit, whereas you're going to get about 24,000 BTUs of heat out of 36. So uh, by by every metric, this unit is better with the one concern saying, well, can it really provide the capacity that I need that this unit could? And the answer to that is yeah, yes, it absolutely can. And so we're gonna look at these <clears throat> two units in terms of delivered capacity here. Here is that two and a half ton unit. These designs come out of uh, VRoom, which is our product selection software. Uh, and I have these at a ASHRAE Philadelphia standard. So, um, whatever that is. I think it's like 95 degrees and seven degrees or something like that. So this is, you know, design for Philadelphia this is like max design condition. So it's performing um, against a full load. And you can see that the 30,000 B2, not only does it provide 36,000 B2s of cooling, it'll provide over 40,000 B2s of cooling. So this can be used as your three ton multi-zone option uh, all day, every day. And it, frankly, it should be. Uh, you can see I've loaded it up with four 12,000 B2 high walls for a total of uh, 48,000 B2s of connected capacity, four tons, and it's delivering nearly three and a half tons of pulling capacity. So use this as a three ton unit or a little bit more all day long. It also has four ports of uh, connectivity, single fan cabinet, and it's high heat. So uh, great, great unit, workhorse unit. Uh, we've been really happy with that. And just as good of a unit, again, between these two units, you almost don't have to sell any more uh, multi-zone outdoor. Uh, the two-ton unit, which also, as you can see, over delivers on cooling capacity. I've got three nominal tons of indoor connected capacity, and it's delivering uh, 32,000 BTUs, a little more than 32,000 BTUs. Um, so a, it can be applied as a 30, as a two and a half ton unit, again, all day, every day. And it's high heat. Um, so again, between these two units, you know, I, I, there's so much more bang for buck here than an 18. I would almost always recommend uh, going with the 24 over the 18. And I would definitely recommend 
when possible, which I think is most of the time, using this over a 36. Um, and then we'll talk about using them in conjunction with each other for uh, jobs that require larger piece of equipment. Looking at the 36 also deliver, over delivers pretty significantly, nearly four tons. I've connected four nominal tons of capacity inside. And you can see it's delivering almost, uh, they're almost delivering not each one of them nominally, even though they're connected only to a three ton system. So the two, the two and a half and the three ton all over deliver significantly on cooling. Use that to your advantage, be aware of it and make sure you're selecting the product based on its performance, not just based on uh, you know, the, the model number of it versus uh, what you think the load in the house is, you know, what your needs are in the house. You can save a lot of money and be much more competitive on your quote uh, if you select the right product. Some points to remember on multi-zone, have to install at least two units onto it. Um, gas and coil, like gas coil combos uh, and conventional air handlers, although they can be hooked up to ductless equipment, cannot currently be hooked up to multi-zone equipment hoping that we will see that change this year. Not currently the case. Uh, we'll talk about the 40 MBAV air handler a little later, but the 18, 24, 30, and 36,000 BTU uh, capacities of that air handler are multi-zone compatible, so you have lots of air handler options on your multi-zone jobs. Uh, we always want to obviously use the uh, indoor unit that best fits the needs of the space. We do, just as a reminder, we have 6,000 BTU high walls avail available in that mid-tier product. We talked about that 40 MBD uh, concealed ducted unit. Um, and we do have floor consoles. The 18Ks do uh, work as under ceiling units. So that sometimes comes in handy for long hallways uh, where you, a high wall is just going to blow and hit the other side of the hallway. I want to use the capacity to cover the whole hallway. A lot of times they work well. And uh, even though they have a little bit more of a commercial look to them, uh, church basements, stuff like that, any basement, where you want to avoid a pump, maybe you have, you know, eight or 10 inches above grade in the basement and you can't, you can't gravity drain a high wall. Your, your gravity drain is going to be wind up being below grade. Uh, you can put one of these on the ceiling and you'll stay above grade. You won't have to use the pump. You want to look for opportunities to capitalize and just bear in mind all of the performance benefits of the 24 and 30,000 BTU units. You're going to be your best bang for buck, most cost effective. They over deliver on cooling capacity. They're both high heat. They both offer you nice uh, connectivity. And then use the design software. Um, so uh, to sort of reconcile the performance of the equipment against the load uh, to make sure that your, compa your equipment's compatible to make sure you haven't exceeded any line set length, stuff like that. And then of course, it'll tell you how much refrigerant you need to add and all that good stuff as well. Looking at uh, primary heating solutions, uh, we really like the idea of two systems over one in most cases. So when whenever someone calls me and is looking to do primary heating and they're excited, and this is one of the reasons that I wasn't uh, as excited about the high heat 48 as a lot of other people were, um, you know, it's I, I always view it as preferable to use two smaller systems. So uh, typically that's going to give you a, a greater total heating capacity if you use two two tons. Uh, you're going to get the same, if not better, heating capacity than one four ton. Uh, at, at the same time, you're going to retain better turndown for cooling, because if you need 48,000 BTUs of heat in a space, it's not likely that you need anywhere close to that uh, for cooling. So uh, having one single large unit, you're reducing how much you can turn uh, that unit down for the cooling side. You may be oversized for cooling. Uh, so you get better turndown when you have these sm two smaller systems. Oftentimes it's more cost effective than a single larger unit. And when I say use two systems, you could use two multi-zone systems. You could also use a single zone and a multi-zone, depending on how you're breaking the house up and approaching. And that would be even more cost effective. It gives you some redundancy in a, in a primary heating situation where they're relying on these heat pumps year round to heat their home. Um, if a compressor goes down, they still have some heat in the house. There's a lot to be said for that in a primary heating situation. Um, it will, oh, again, turn down, talking about turn down again, but now on the heating side, uh, we are going to bleed heat into uh, heads that aren't calling, especially if we can't turn down to the capacity request of the indoor equipment. So when it's 55 degrees outside and they want a little bit of heat, this thing's going to, a big four-ton high heat unit's going to be looking to reject 
pretty significant amount of heat into the house that could cause overheating. So two smaller units addresses that, allows us to break uh, the home up by wing or floor. In theory, could potentially provide some areas with cooling while other areas had heating. Stays in a smaller cabinet size, which is uh, gives you more options on the outside of the house, typically more palatable to the homeowner, uh, and gives you the option to locate the two condensers in two different locations uh, for ease of running line sets or logistics in terms of your line set. So a lot of advantages to using two smaller units uh, over one larger unit when it comes to a, a primary heating application. Also, uh, whenever you can incorporate an air handler, it gives you the opportunity to make up some of the building's load with electric heat. So if you're getting close, you know, you propose two systems and it's cost effective, but you're you know, 7,000 BTUs away from meeting lo design load, which only, you know, represents the coldest day, but only probably a few uh, days out of the year. Um, you could just put electric heat into an air handler and make up that difference instead of uh, kind of seeing a point of diminishing returns with using heat pump equipment. So always nice to have an air handler. And again, there's some redundancy uh, backup heat as well with that. So something to consider. All right, looking at the 40 MBAB, Air handlers, the previous gen 40 MBA AQ uh, is in transition to the 40 MBA B. We still have um, both models in various sizes and in inventory. Got new uh, capacities. The big ones were the capacities and the dimensions. So previous gen only came in uh, two, three, and four ton. This new one comes in 18, 24, 30, 36, 48, and 58, or if we want to think of it as 60,000 BTU five ton option. Um, and along with that, those different capacities enjoy different cabinet dimensions, which I'll show you on a subsequent slide here. Uh, we got slightly improved performance uh, and efficiencies from a compatibility standpoint. The 18, the 24, the 30 uh, are multi-zone compatible. There is a dedicated 36K air handler that is multi-zone compatible. Be aware, however, it has no application outside of multi-zone. So we, have, we had to bring in a... 36K specifically for multi-zone systems. Uh, and then we have a different 36K uh, four and five ton unit that are single zone only. And again, kind of these pair with an MARB single zone. That means they pair with a multi-zone. These pair with the MBRB or CQ. We looked at this model number and these relationships earlier, and therefore they are single zone only. Here, I'm just going to illustrate the 36,000 uh, BTU air handler that is multi-zone compatible. Shown right here on the multi-zone side of the quick reference card that we recently released. Um, there it is. And what you the, the thing to take notice of here is the B in the model number. And that's going to mean that it's multi-zone compatible, just like the 18, 24, and 30. Going over to the single zone ducted side of that card, You'll see that these are single zone air handler systems. You have an 18K air handler and it matches with an MARBQ. You have a 24K air handler, it matches with a uh, 38 MARBQ24, a 30 with a 30. So we're still in the MAR line. We know that the three, the four, and the five come out of the MBRC line was B. We saw that it's changing to a C. So we know that the three, the four, and the five match with that MBRCQ line. But if we look on the card, we notice that there's actually two three-ton options um, and that we can match this with a 38 MARBQ36. However, if we look at the model number here, we can see that there's a B there. And that's different than all our other MARB units here. This is this is a dedicated MARB unit. It's only designed, manufactured, and sold to be paired with this air handler. It's not the regular 30 MARB Q36 outdoor unit that we stock. And for that reason, we're not stocking it. We are instead staying with the same format that we had before. We're stocking the single zone 36K air handler to go with the 38 MBRCQ36. This is the same way it worked previously. It's the same way it works with the four and the five ton unit. We are stocking this air handler, but we're only stocking it for the purposes of uh, multi-zone options. That's what's going on there. Looking at some differences in the uh, old gen versus the new gen, what's the same? They're both four-way multi-positional. 
Uh, they're both plug and play, meaning you, they have matching terminals in and out, and you're going to connect them, and they're going to turn on and run. It has a ductless ready coil, meaning it has no metering device. It's 24 volt thermostat operated, uh, and power and communication come from the outdoor unit. Uh, in the smaller capacities, it's gonna, that's going to be provided over a tray cable. And in the larger capacities, as we've talked about several times now, that's going to require a, a separate comm wire in addition to a 14-gauge uh, wire, probably Romex. Uh, what's new about it? Well, we went from a copper uh, aluminum fin coil to a all aluminum coil. We condensed the controls and moved them. I say we, <laughs> the, the manufacturer. Uh, condensed controls, move them up into the upper control compartment. We got a new single piece uh, heat package. Previous for the AAs was an EHKMA. For the AB air handlers, it's an EHKMB. It's one of the few instances where the model nomenclature from carrier makes sense. Uh, we talked about new dimensions, and we'll look at those in a minute. We now have a wired control option in addition to a 24-volt thermostat. Still going to recommend the 24 volt thermostat in most uh, applications, but there is a wire control option and that does ship with the unit. So it's out of the box. You have the option to control it with a wired controller. Additionally, there is a wireless controller that ships with the unit. And if you install the wired controller, you can use the wireless controller in conjunction with that. So the wired controller acts as a receiver for the wireless controller. If you're not using the wire controller, the wireless controller has uh, no use. Uh, they changed from sweat connections or brace connections on the indoor equipment to mechanical connections. Um, and it uses a 24 volt thermostat or can use a 24 volt thermostat just like the old one, but now it is set up to use a heat pump thermostat, not a conventional thermostat. Those of you guys that installed this new used conventional thermostat settings. Here's the 18 through 36. Uh, these would all be single fan outdoor cabinets. Um, you can see the performance there. Nice efficiencies. The 18 and the 24, both are high heat, provide full heating capacity. Um, down to five degrees with a COP of nearly two. So that's great. Here are the dimensions. Uh, they're 45, at, at their shortest, they're 45. Um, most will be between 45 and 49. However, the 60K is 53 inches. The depth is 21 inches across the board. Um, the 18 through 24 now 17 inch and 17 and a half inches wide, which a lot of guys had asked for. Um, the 30 through 48 remain 21 inches wide, which is what the previous cabinet sizes were, and the 60K is 24 and a half inches wide. Here is the uh, 48 and 60. You can see the performance there. We already talked about the dimensions. Just want to show because we say that the you know that the uh, eighteen and twenty four are high heat and the others are not. I just want to just give you a little bit of frame of reference for uh, what that means relative to a conventional heat pump. So here's a sixteen sear two stage sort of. Uh, it comes out of our uh, product. Uh, in this case, Bryant but it's representative of lots of manufacturers' products that are being proposed out on the market um, in terms of its performance, maybe not its features and its build quality, but in just in terms of the, the heating that it puts out. Uh, very similar to a lot of products on mid-tier products, conventional or unitary heat pumps that are out on the market. Um, so even though this unit is not high heat, here we're looking at the three ton, uh, it still does provide 10,000 PT more uh, heat than a conventional heat pump uh, at lower temperatures, uh, which represents a significant cost operate savings when you think that you're basically going to get the, you're going to get these BTUs at half the price, uh, as you're going to pay for them with this because you're going to be using electric heat, obviously, and much quieter than a conventional system as well. And here's the four ton. The story is pretty much the same, a little bit more heat out of the four ton, but, uh, you get the point. All right. Looking at changes to the board, uh, there is some new wiring and terminal functionality. Um, there's a dip switch that dictates whether you will, are going to use a 24 volt thermostat or the wire controller that comes with it. If you want to use the 24 volt thermostat, turn dip switch one one on. Um, 24 volt thermostat um, can provide emergency heat operation. That's a, that's not totally new, but it's it's now it's built into it. There's we don't have to use a relay or anything. Airflow also comes set out of the box. Previously, we were using a wireless remote. 
to put it into an automatic airflow setup. Uh, not necessary, it comes set from the box now, uh, but via a rotary switch on the board. So you, no need to set anything unless you're replacing a board, then you would match the rotary switch position to the existing board's position. Otherwise you have R and C, you have L, uh, which is a signal wire. We're not gonna probably, we can unpack that in a, a little bit deeper dive in an installation class, but for the most part, you're not gonna use it. G is obviously blower. I'm gonna skip Y1 and Y2. Um, w is not used. Auxiliary emergency is not used. W1 and W2 are your auxiliary emergency terminals. They are jumped through the board. Uh, however, you can decouple them by removing the jumper on the board, and then they'll give you staging options depending on the heat package that you have installed. B is the reversing valve terminal. There's not, it's not an O or an OB, it's just a B. And that's because historically B meant that it energized in the heating mode. And that's what this one does. So we need to remember that um, when we're setting our thermostat up that we're setting it to energize in the heating mode. That is in all likelihood gonna be the opposite of the default uh, setting in the thermostat. So then looking at Y1 and Y2, these are our compressor calls. They used to be cooling calls. Now they're compressor calls and there's a reversing valve to tell it whether that compressor is in heating or cooling mode. They're not staged. This is a fully in inverter driven piece of equipment. They, it is not a two stage piece of equipment. And these are not staging strictly speaking. Um, and so I tried to put it just kind of concisely. It's, it's a little ambiguous, but they're simply more or less aggressive approaches in the logic to achieving set point. That doesn't necessarily mean that they're not going to deliver the same or similar capacities. It's not like when you go from Y1 to Y2, the compressor ramps up or you're going to see any like overt changes in operation. It's just parameters in the background that change the way that the unit is looking to address the cooling call. If you have a two-stage thermostat, by the best bet would be to wire it two-stage. If you don't, uh, you'll wire it to YY2. We're running specials on these systems, um, specifically on the three and four ton single zones as we look forward to the a new single zone uh, air handler system that we're gonna talk about here in a second. We're looking to move out of uh, carrying as many of the three and four ton single zones with these 40 MBAA or 40 MBAB air handlers. And these are uh, very, attractively priced in my opinion i mean the bang for buck that you're getting you know, this this includes a line set so you can have a three ton uh air handler system fully inverter driven uh indoor and outdoor with a line set uh, 3400 so uh really good prices uh i think hopefully that those that can offer some value to your customers and and they'll they'll see that there even as an air conditioner at the point if they have an, any air handler system uh, that the line set can be replaced on. Remember that those systems do require a uh, double insulated ductless diameter line set. So you would have to be able to replace the line set. It's a really fantastic option. Um, so please keep that in mind. All right. Now, looking at our newest air handler systems, and actually they extend beyond just air handlers. They do pair with uh, cased coils and furnaces, oil furnaces, high velocity systems, et cetera, but we'll look at them here initially um, with their matched air handler. So the outdoor unit is a 38 MUR, the indoor unit is a 40 MUA. Uh, they come in the exact same sizes as the previous uh, 40 MBAB systems we just looked at, 18, 24, 30, 36, 48, 60. Uh, we do have them in an inventory and they are available for purchase. We have ran about 12 training classes on them thus far. We will continue to uh, run more training classes and we may even do a webinar uh, for installation training. They are all high heat standards. So Carrier offers them in standard heat and high heat. We're carrying only the high heat versions of these units. The air handler is minus a couple of very minor details. It's the exact same air handler as the 40 MBAB. Uh, it is comes in the same sizes and capacities. It's multi-positional, uh, the controls, uh, physically are the same. Obviously, there's going to be some some software differences, but physically, the controls look the same. They're located in the same compartment. The coils the same. Only difference being that this one will have a metering device, an EEV, inside, uh, whereas we just mentioned that the 40 MBAB and AA did not because the ductless unit metered that refrigerant outside. This one is getting metered inside. Uh, 
And when you pair it with a cased coil, uh, it would use the metering device associated with that coil at TXV in all likelihood. Uh, it is 24 volt thermostat operated, just like the 40 MBAB, uses the same electric heat package as the 40 MBAB. Uh, one of the differences, however, is that the indoor unit and outdoor unit here are powered separately. So it's not receiving its power from the outdoor unit like the 40 MBAB does, like most ductless equipment. Instead, it's being powered separately like a conventional air handler would. Uh, additionally, it uses conventional line set sizes. So it's not going to use uh, three eighths and five eighths. It's going to use three eighths and three quarter or three eighths and seven eighths. And because the metering device is located inside, that means that the liquid line is a true liquid line and does not require insulation in most cases. Those two things together mean that these pieces of equipment can reuse existing line sets. So this is a retrofit option. Uh, you do not need to run a new line set to install this equipment. It's fully inverter driven. Uh, I think we already mentioned high heat, variable speed into a blower motor. Um, and the outdoor unit has a 24 volt defrost style control. So you would wire it up if you took a heat pump out Basically, you can put this back in as though it were any other heat pump. Um, and we'll look at a few of the installation considerations here in a little bit. It has an outdoor unit diagnostic display. Very good performance. Um, these are all C and EER2 and HSPF2 ratings. But in the, you know, in the old ratings, old, they're like less than a year old. Um, you know, this these had broken. So this was like 21 C or 20 C or so. Very, very efficient equipment. Um, very high performing equipment. So I give you, again, a comparison versus conventional equipment, this time uh, with Carrier's model, the 25 HPB6, which I believe is a single stage uh, 16 sear unit. Again, sort of uh, representative of a lot of different units that are offered by a lot of different manufacturers at that tier. Um, their 18K unit at six degrees puts out 10,000 BTUs. Our 18K unit, this uh, MUR unit puts out 19,000 BTUs at five, so 90% more heat. So again, significant savings there. Uh, double the heat on the two ton. You know, conventional unit puts out 12. This unit puts out 24, 100% more heat. Three ton, or I'm sorry, the two and a half ton. Again, about 90% more, 13,500 BTUs more. Almost a 5kW heat package is worth of additional heat at low temperature. And then the three ton really... Uh, blows away, it puts out 27,300 BTUs more than its conventional counterpart at low temperature. It's 170% more heat at low temperature. Here's the 48, same deal, almost double uh, its conventional counterpart. And then the same is true with the five tons. So amazing heating capacity out of these, great efficiencies. And really, they're going to be easy to install. Uh, for the most part, there's a few little uh, things that you got to learn, but from a sales and application standpoint, you you can, if they had a heat pump, you can replace it with this heat pump, uh, the wiring and the line sets and everything. Uh, it should be able to facilitate them. So again, fully inverter driven, regardless of the control use. One thing that I need to point out, and it, it may be on a subsequent slide here, but the 40, and it's kind of confusing because these look identical. You got a 40 MBAB and you got a 40 MUA. If they, if they were sitting next to one another, you'd be hard pressed to identify the differences between them. Um, so it's going to be easy to potentially get them confused. The 40 MBAB came with that wired controller and wireless remote that we talked about. This unit can use that controller, but it doesn't come with it. So this unit comes with no controller out of the box. We're going to recommend in most cases a 24 volt thermostat be used. Uh, it does have advanced dehumidification mode. And again, just like the Infinity and uh, the mid-tier, I, I said Infinity, I guess I should say Infinity and Evolution and the preferred and performance high wall units also have those advanced dehumidification features. They all kind of tie together with carriers sort of claim to fame as to being the best at managing uh, humidity. So I'm gonna give you a quick installation overview, not, not intended to replace an actual uh, training or installation review of this product. But the first thing you're gonna do is determine how you wanna connect your indoor unit to your outdoor unit in terms of wiring. We already talked about piping. Uh, we know we can use conventional uninsulated line sets. We can use line sets that are existing. So how do I want to wire my indoor unit to my outdoor unit? Um, if I had a, an existing heat pump, 
and it had a minimum of five wires, I could use 24 volt wire. Uh, or I can use two wire communication. I'm probably going to have to run a new wire. 16-2 stranded shielded. There's a dip switch that's going to dictate on the outdoor unit. If I leave them all off, I'm using two wire communication. If I turn if I turn two on, I'm using 24 volt thermostat wiring. Here's the two wire communication inside and outside. I want to point something out real quick. I may point it out one or two more times as we go. Uh, you have a row of terminals here and you have a row of terminals here. And up here, they are trying to indicate to you what those terminals are. These two terminals, thus, right, the top two left terminals are S1 and S2. These terminals are R and C. Do not put 24 volt RC power to S1 and S2. You will have to replace the board. Uh, so 16 2 stranded shielded wire from indoor to outdoor on S1 and S2, and you have two wire communication between your air handler and your outdoor unit. Obviously, that's not going to be an option on a case uh, coil and furnace. You're going to be using 24 volt communication method. Uh, option number two, 24 volt th communication method, right? So now I'm going to flip that dip switch. I'm also going to flip in inside dip switch one, four. One, two is, is telling me whether I'm using a 24, I'm sorry, one, one is telling me whether I'm using a 24 volt thermostat or two wire comp. So this, this dip switch being on is not totally relevant to what we're talking about. We're just talking about the wiring from the inside to the outside. That's this dip switch and this dip switch. This one is telling us that they're using a 24 volt thermostat on this system, which makes sense because they're also using 24 volt wiring uh, between their indoor and outdoor equipment. So we need 18 gauge thermostat wire with a minimum of five conductors. Uh, we move those dip switches into those positions. We avoid landing 24 volts on uh, S1 and S2. We put our 24 volts down here and we're set up for 24 volt uh, thermostat wiring, probably the, most, the more likely uh, scenario. These just show those terminal strips again. And they're what you would, tip, for the most part, they're what you would expect from a heat pump, conventional heat pumps defrost board. You're going to have R and C uh, for power. You're going to have Y1 and Y2. We talked about what that means. They don't really mean, uh, you know, first and second stage. It's an inverter driven piece of equipment. It's just an indicator of, uh, you know, how aggressively we want to, to approach set, uh, addressing the call. Um, in theory, you can actually, if you only had one wire, if you want to wire it two stage, now again, it's not two stage, but if you want to use two stage thermostat and wiring, then that's the best. Use Y1 and Y2. If you're only using one of them, you can actually land it on either one, but I'd recommend Y2. We already talked about the reversing valve being uh, terminal B on the air handler strip. That's the case out here as well at the outdoor unit, and it energizes in heat. W is not used. Typically, W is the terminal we associate with sending a call inside for backup heat during defrost. It's not what it is here. W is not used. And instead, D is the terminal uh, that puts out 24 volts for electric heat. So minus a couple of little terminal designation differences, um, it's pretty much the same kind of functionality that you would expect out of a conventional defrost board. And that's what's going to allow you, again, to install it like a, as though it were conventional heat pump, which is great. Next, so we determined our wiring between the indoor and the outdoor equipment. It could be two wire comp, could be uh, minimum five wire conventional heat pump wiring. Next thing we're gonna do is determine whether we wanna use a 24 volt thermostat or two wire controller. Uh, we're gonna advocate using a 24 volt thermostat, uh, but the option uh, is up to you. Remember it does not ship with the two wire controller. You would have to order it separately. Uh, so when we turn that on, Again, we talked about this a little bit, but if that's on, I'm using a 24 volt thermostat. And if it's off, I'm using a wire controller. We're told that newer iterations of the board won't actually require this dip switch to be turned on or off. It will auto detect your controller. Um, however, we weren't given any kind of serial range to indicate which products would or wouldn't have that built in. So we're still teaching you to set the dip switch. Uh, we already talked about the terminal strips on the 40 MBAB and the terminal strips on the 40 MUA are the same. So I'm not going to go over them again. If you are using the two wire controller, here it is, HA and HB on the two wire controller and on the 24 volt interface. They are not polarity sensitive and you can use 24 volt, uh, you know, conventional 18 gauge thermostat wires. 
And then this puts it all together. So basically I have three ways that I can do this if I'm doing it with the air handler, right? So, uh, the matching 40 MUA air handler. Scenario one, I'm gonna use a 24 volt thermostat, but I'm gonna use a two wire communication between the air handler and the outdoor unit. So this is scenario one. I kind of put this slide together because in the book, let's talk about the dip switches and then talk about the way the book presents them because I think it's confusing. So here's scenario one. We laid out what that is, 24 volt thermostat, two wire comm. And we can see that, right? They're using S1 and S2 between the indoor and the outdoor for their communication. And they're using the conventional uh, 24 volt thermostat connections here. Now, one of the reasons I take the time to lay out the terminal functionality is because they don't in the installation manual and they don't even show you specifically where to land any wires, right? They're just showing here, like this terminal block will be connected to this terminal block the the actual details of that uh, are not disclosed. So, uh, but that's what overall this is showing us is that we're using a 24 volt thermostat uh, connection. We're using a two wire comp. We know there's some dip switches associated with that. So uh, the dip switches that are associated with that are SW11 being turned on because we're using a 24 volt thermostat and that's it. Everything else left in its default position. Well, and this is the outdoor uh, dip switch bank and nothing is changed there. It's just all in its default position. However, be aware that in the installation manual, they don't show these dip switches at all for any of the scenarios. And this, even though these are the dip switches associated with the indoor unit, it's shown right next to the outdoor unit. And it's not, and it's not clear which set of, you know, they're both four switch banks. They don't make, they don't make it clear which set they're really referring to here. So uh, I am telling you on this slide, SW1 is your indoor bank. SW, S1 is your outdoor bank. Okay, so that I, I kind of, I clipped and pasted this in so that you would have everything you needed here. Uh, but the book is a little bit confusing. Scenario two, two wire communication and two wire controller. So there you can see that would be your wiring really straightforward. Uh, there's some other stuff that makes this less appealing. We'll talk about it in a minute. There would be your dip switches. And then all 24 volt communication, which I think is going to be popular. Uh, again, indicating 24 volt wire between all your 24 volt terminals. And I give you your dip switches. Here is the main PCB. Uh, this face is kind of perpendicular in the cabinet um, or perpendicular to the main board that's facing you. These green wiring blocks are removable. This is the rotary dial that dictates the size of the equipment and the airflow it is not to be changed unless you are replacing a board. That board includes uh, terminals for an alarm output, dry contacts for a work output, interlock to the blower, uh, a safety monitoring circuit, which is held closed by a factory jumper if you want to wire your safeties uh, in series to these two terminals, you're going to need to remove that jumper so that uh, the terminals can then monitor the position of this, the safety devices connected to it. And then you have a UV LED output, which is again interconnected to the blower, but instead of being dry contacts, outputs 24 volt hot and common. Um, I'm not going to get into these dip switches. I'm only going to make you aware of them. So here's SW1. Again, uh, we talked about manipulating some of these for which thermostat we're going to use, what wiring methodology we're going to use between the indoor and the outdoor unit. These additional ones have to do with what we would normally associate control parameters that we would normally associate with the thermostat. So when we set up a thermostat and it asks us, what kind of system do you have? What's the, you know, what's the temperature at which you don't want to bring on electric heat? What's the temperature you do want to bring on electric heat or allow electric heat below? Um, What's the staging inhibitor? How long does it need to run on first stage before I can let it go to the second stage or or backup heat, right? If what's the swing between you know what uh, how far away from set point before I energize back? It asks us all those questions. We're familiar with that. We've done that a thousand times. If I use the two wired controller, there are, none of those programmable features are in that controller. Um, it is just basically conveying like sensor information to this board and we have to set those parameters with these dip switches okay which are laid out here uh, we're not going to get into that functionality right now just going to make you aware of that but 
that's another reason to kind of, you're going to get better control. And I think you're going to understand and almost just as importantly, you're going to understand what you're setting in the controls a little bit better. Uh, if you elect to use a 24 volt thermostat and set those control parameters through the thermostat instead of the dip switches on the board. So these would only apply if you used a wired controller uh, as opposed to a 24 volt thermostat. Piping wise, uh, you're not going to likely have flare uh, tools to connect conventional heating and air sizes, which would be, you know, the concern here would be like three quarter and seven eighths. Most people don't have the, that equipment. The unit outdoor and indoor ship with these adapters, you just mechanically fit and then braze. Of course, when you're brazing, make sure to use uh, nitrogen. Uh, and the installation manual does not currently cover uh, installing these with conventional equipment. However, you can and Carrier did release uh, their supplemental instructions on how to uh, do the wiring. We've also put out quick start guides for all this product as well. And we've trained our tech support on it. So hopefully everybody will be up to speed and we'll make this um, pretty painless to install. Again, it's for the most part, minus a few minor differences, uh, you can install this almost just like any conventional heat pump you've ever installed. And so you can imagine that a case coil and a gas furnace is going to, again, install just like pretty much any heat pump you've ever installed. So what are the differences? You know, the, there's a lot of overlap with these units. I mean, we have two air handlers that are nearly identical in every regard. What are the differences? So what do we want to keep in mind as the differences? Where should we apply one versus the other? Man, a lot of that is up to you. A lot of it may be price dependent. Uh, some of it is going to be dependent on whether you can pull a new line set or not. Some of it may be a performance based decision. So uh, I can just really lay out the sort of fundamental differences, give you a couple of thoughts. So the 40 MBAB and previous gen 40 MBAA uh, are single and multi zone, right? Multi zone up to three ton, single zone up to five. So that means I can put it on a multi zone with other options in the house. Uh, they power from the outdoor unit, so I, fewer breakers are going to be required potentially. Uh, so again, that's sometimes a constraint that dictates what we can and can't do with a job. Um, performance is going to be a little bit, not, you know, it's still a high performing unit in a single zone uh, format, but doesn't perform in terms of efficiency or heat output as well uh, as the MUAA in a single zone context. The only diff, the only exception to that rule is the 18 and 24,000 B2 single zone units. The 18 and 24,000 B2 single zone unit at 40 MBAB performs almost identically to the 18 and 24, 40 MUAA system. Um, so from efficiency and heat output, you're getting basically the same thing. The only difference that you're getting there is like the the differences from an installation standpoint, the outdoor unit powers the indoor or or, or doesn't. Um, you need to run a new line set or you don't, uh, stuff like that. So, uh, but once you get into the 30, 36, 48, and 60, this guy, this uh, 38 MURA is, is giving you better heat at better efficiencies. Um, but it's going to cost a little more than this. So, you know, they may like that, but you can sell this single zone as long as you can replace the line set. Uh, especially with the deals that we're running and really offer still what what is a phenomenal piece of equipment at a great price. Um, but with with the uh, this coming along, it's, you know, it shines a little bit less, maybe. So um, some thoughts there, you know, and then just again to run down the basic differences. Hopefully we kind of understand them at this point. But in this case, the outdoor, you know, the, here's our 40 MBAB. Here's our 40 MUAA systems. Um, this guy gets powered by the outdoor unit, indoor and outdoor unit powered separately on this guy. Uh, compatible with ductless equipment? No, proprietary 40 MUAA, 38 MUR only. Multi-zone compatible? Yes. Multi-zone compatible? No. 24 volt interface location only in the air handler. It's still matching with a ductless outdoor this one's both, right? Because I can, uh, as we saw, I can use it even with a non-ducted uh, outdoor or a ductless out. I'm, I misspoke, I apologize. I can use this with a case core, like a conventional piece of equipment, even a conventional air handler. So like an FB air handler. 
Uh, this one's going to require both line sets be insulated. This one is not. This one uses ductless diameters. This one uses residential. Uh, this one meters everything outside in the cooling mode. This one's using the indoor units metering device. They're both four-way multi-positional. They both have airflow set out of the box. You can see the uh, the sizes here. So I'm going to go back real quickly because this is where uh, we're pretty much going to end it. Um, you know, so what are my thoughts? I think that probably what will happen if I had a crystal ball, which I don't, is that uh, we're always going to continue to stock the 38. Uh, one more difference I will mention is that the three ton 40 MBAB is a single fan uh, unit. And it's if, if we're talking about it in, in its single zone. Uh, I'll just go back real quick. So this is this system. If I'm doing it single zone, the three ton unit is single fan. This system, if I'm doing it single zone, the three ton unit is two fan. So that that is a uh, factor that you might want to consider. But at any rate, you know, we will always stock this air handler in 18, 24, uh, 30 and 36. And the reason we're going to do that is because it's multi zone compatible. Uh, so guys are going to if you want an air handler on a multi zone system, we you need to have this air handler. So we'll stock it. And the fact that we stock it for multi-zone uh, means that you'll have it available to you as single zone as well, because it's compatible with our core uh, ductless outdoor product. You know, how much of the four and five we stock? Eh, probably not much because this one just may, may make better sense. But for the, you know, 18, 24, 30 and 36 options, you'll have the option to pick between the two. I see, I suspect that in retrofit applications, uh, you're really going to want to go for this one. The wires are already there. It's just less work. Um, however, you'll have this one at your disposal as well. So just something to think about. Um, I'm going to, we're going to do the IRA separately. We did it uh, in the initial presentation of this in the webinar, but for this recording, uh, I'm going to skip through that and we'll do that separately. lot still and you know moving parts there a lot of sort of unsettled information so that's constantly changing so uh just to wrap it up guys didn't want to have this slide just so uh we could review uh these last few things and then i'll wrap it up and thank you for your time if you have any questions about this stuff you're interested in it um please give me a call or shoot me an email see my information at the top if you um Post sale, if you're on the job, we have tech support. They are trained on this product. We have their tech support number there. We have new color catalogs, trifolds, and system cut sheets available. New TM playbooks, which we referenced in this presentation. So if you haven't got those quick reference cards, um, please get them. We have new quick system price books. Uh, we've had the VRoom design software for a while, but it's still available and it's still being updated. Don't forget that we have um, a dealer locator uh, at ducklessbryant.com and ducklesscarrier.com. And that's where all of our radio marketing, um, digital marketing, all drives consumers there. And we're using Comfort Media to create uh, video case studies that we use as advertisements to drive guys there. Uh, and then we use um, we use those with our dealers as well. So uh, and we've got them on the website. The idea being that we really want to kind of focus on the some of the bread and butter type of duckless jobs that you as a contractor do. It's going to be somewhat unique to you. Uh, maybe it's multi-zone, maybe it's single zone, maybe you do a lot of sunrooms and garages and rooms over attics, or maybe you do a lot of add-on multi-zone cooling for bi-level houses or ranchers or Cape Cods or row homes or whatever. Whatever uh is sort of your most common job that you know in your area people are looking for solutions for you do a video case study about that you can use it as uh, marketing material it's worked out really well for us we're splitting it three ways um so it's co-op you're only going to pay for a third of it and it's worked really well so go to those uh we've also opened up the dealer locators so if you're interested in that let us know um and go to these and check out some of the the videos we've put and then if you're interested in doing that with one of your customers uh, please let us know we still have a program for the previous generation 619 peq bryant's and 40 maq uh, carrier high wall units if you have a warranty repair on that unit contact us we can apply the value of that warranty repair to a new unit uh the new 40 mahb or 619 ahb which is a significant upgrade over the old unit 
Uh, we do have the product installation and overview videos for the floor console, the ceiling cassette, the concealed ducted unit, the 40 MBAA air handler, and the 40 MAHB high wall. We'll be having the 40 MBAB air handler soon, along with the MUA MUR unit and um, some additional technical videos for commonly asked questions. So that's what I've got, guys. I'm gonna I'm gonna skip the video. We kind of talked about comfort media. Um, Thank you for your time. Appreciate the interest in this. And again, if there's any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Thank you.